What's up everybody? Welcome to question 6 November 2020 grade 11. It was a function question where it was given to us. It was a straight line and also a hyperbola. Now let's read this question together. It says here the diagram below shows the graph of f of x which is a hyperbola. This is just a general equation here. We already know with this, this is line of asymptote, this is line of asymptotes, all right, and we're given a straight line there. We know that B here is our gradient, we are used to it as being M, in this case they give us as B, it's fine. And then they tell us that asymptotes of F are X, oh, they even give them to us, okay, it's F is negative 3, Y is equal to 1, and then they said G intersect, F and G intersect at point A. Okay, there is the point of intersection there and also at point B rather. They are also intersecting there. Alright, and then they said that uh, the X intercept of X and B and at B. Okay, no worries about that. While C, C is just a point on F, G passes through D. Okay, that's D. D, which is of uh, the point of uh, intersection of the lines of asymptotes. Okay. Oh, we've got a lot of points here. This should be fairly easy. Minus 3 is to 1. Okay. And then the first question in this one, they said uh, axis of, they said what? 6.1. They says write down the equation of F in terms of A. All right. So basically, they're asking us to find the equation of a hyperbola, but in terms of A. All right. So, because it means now we didn't know what is A for now. Okay, basically what we can do, I know the lines of asymptotes. It means we know what is Q and we know what is. So, Q in this case would have to be, uh, it's our X is going to be minus 3. Therefore, uh, sorry, P rather, not Q. Q is what? Let me Okay, let me write it here. Q. Q is going to be given by 1, which is this, this line here, y is equals to 1, okay, y is equals to 1, okay, and therefore P is equal to negative 3, okay, it's going to be positive 3, so that when you put it there, all right, so therefore F of X, in this case, we can just substitute these numbers here, A is equals to X, Okay, x plus 3, so that when you solve, it's going to give you minus 3, and therefore plus 1. So, and that's how you write the equation of f of x in terms of a. Alright, let's move on. Uh, 6.2. 6.2 is to determine the value of a. Alright, to determine the value of a, fairly, fairly easy and simple and straightforward. They have given us c here. Which they, said, which they said to us is just a point on f. So, we can take this point here which is a negative 2 and 6, and substitute here in this expression to get the value of A. So Y is equal to 6. A is A, we don't know it. All over X is minus 2 plus 3 plus 1. Okay, so now we need to solve this. Take 1 to that side, it's going to be 6 minus 1 all over A, and therefore negative, 2 plus 3 is going to give us 1. So therefore, we're going to be left with A is equals to uh, 6 minus 1 is going to give us 5. So therefore, the value of A is going to be equal to 5. Okay. Right. Uh, let's move on to question. Let's move on to question 6.3. 6.3, 6.3, it says here, 6.3 says determine the coordinates of the x-intercept. Okay, coordinate of the x-intercept of f. Remember now, we did find the equation of f. So, we're going to come here, the equation of f, let's say 6.3. The equation of f of x is given by a, we found that a is equal to 5, all over x plus 3, plus 1. Therefore, let's see, okay, we need x inter. x intercept, we get it when y is equal to 0. So, therefore, this is 0 is equal to 5 all over x plus 3, plus 1. 
okay uh, and then uh, let's come here and say take negative one to that side we, one rather is going to be negative five all over x plus three so we're going to do the cross multiply there negative one you're going to have x plus three close bracket is equals to five therefore divided by negative one i know what you guys are going to say somebody said why i don't multiply throughout with negative one but guys the answer will still be the same this is just algebra you're going to have x plus three is equals to negative one therefore take three to that side x is equals to negative five negative three which means x is equals to negative eight therefore the question asked for the coordinates not the value so therefore you're going to have negative eight is to zero okay great stuff so now it says here now determine the values of b and c and write down the equation of g remember g is a straight line guys it is this straight line here uh, it was given to us by this general formula g of x is equals to bx plus c all right so now basically what we need to do uh, let's check here we need to have two points here on this uh, on this uh, graph rather we need to have two points all right now if you have a look at them we just calculated this the value of a on the f here which is this one here okay so the coordinates of a it's minus 8 is to 0 and then we also have got this point here which is also on the g this b we don't have it so we don't worry about that we have got d there d is given to us by the lines of asymptote negative 3 is to 1 okay so with these two points uh, we can be able to find the equation of g of x so we are going to come here and say that we're going to find the gradient of ad using analytical geometry guys you've got this on our formula sheet so therefore we are going to come here and say okay no what are the y values here the y values is one minus zero x values minus three into minus minus eight therefore when I we punch this into our calculator uh, uh we should be able to get one over five please let me know how much you got guys one over five here yeah? let me know how much you got so now uh, with this gradient we can come here and use this equation that i love very much uh, to get the equation of a straight line i prefer this one rather than the other one because i don't have to be stressing about finding c and whatnot so we're gonna choose one point i'm gonna choose a point to substitute here because it got a zero there so i don't have to worry that much minus zero is equals to one over five x minus into minus eight okay good stuff so y is equals to half or no rather not half what you see is what you get <laughs> why am i saying half now one over five x plus eight right so we're gonna multiply throughout with one over five y is equals to one over five times x is going to be x plus 8 all over 5 all right and that's how you would deal with this one guys and therefore once you have got this remember the question said didn't say find the equation it says that found the value so one mark we did find the equation there i'm not sure if it's one mark or not but anyway so b is equals to 1 over 5 and therefore c b is equals to 1 over 5 c is equals to 8 over 5 and you should get your full marks from here guys and this is how you would deal with a question like this one but uh, let's go through to 5 6.5 6.5 it says write down the domain of f domain of f what are the x values of f all right so now we need to write down the x values of f okay you can have a look at there your graph there and then uh, check x values so we can come here and say x values this graph here has got as many x values as possible going there and also even this side is got as many x values going there so it means we have got x is the element of all real numbers 
except the line of asymptotes where this graph is not touching, which is x should never be equal to, to negative 1. No, sorry, negative 3. All right. So it's all the x values, but x should never be equal to negative 3. All right. Moving right along, let's move to 6.6. 6.6 says determine the coordinates of B, which is the point of intersection between G and F of X, right? So if it's the point of intersection between G and F of X, mathematically, what does this mean? This means that it's where G of X is equal to F of X. Excuse my equal to, guys. I know it looks like a Z, but if you are also listening to me, you would also realize that when i say equal to when i read that it looks like a z okay so now let's come here write down our equation the equation of f of x was a uh, five x plus three plus one is equal to the equation of g of x we just did it now it's one over five x plus eight divided by five all right great stuff so now we need to come here and simplify these guys these are fractions i know you did fractions in grade 10 but if you forget please pay attention we are gonna go uh, through them together if you ever look at this our lcd lowest common denominator here in this case is 5 uh, into x plus 3 right so we are gonna multiply everything with this lcd so when you multiply everything with the lcd when you multiply this with lcd it's going to give us 25 uh, one multiply by five x plus three it will remain like that therefore five and five would cancel out we're gonna have x x plus three it, it which is in bracket plus five would cancel out we're gonna have eight therefore x x plus three and that's how you would deal with the uh, with this one guys therefore the only thing that we need to do now we need to multiply out and remove the brackets so five will move the bracket there is going to be five x plus 15 uh, okay you see now i hope you guys can see now one five is equals to x multiply by that x squared plus 3x and then therefore 8 is going to be multiplied by that it's going to say remove the bracket 8x therefore 8 times 3 is going to give us 24 okay all right i'm gonna move up here guys uh, just to make sure that we simplify this further if you group the like terms put everything together we're getting a uh, x squared plus 6x just simplify it guys this is algebra you guys know how to do this by now it's gonna be 6x plus is it plus or minus okay minus 16 is equal to zero therefore we need to solve for x this is a trinomial therefore we need to factorize x and x i always say to my grade 10 learners that please master factorization because it's going to come back everywhere and anywhere mathematics one of the most critical basics is factorizing All right so what are the two numbers when you multiply them together they give us 16 and then when you add or subtract them together they must give us six already it's eight and then two rather okay it's eight and two so the middle term determines the sign of a bigger number well, there you go minus okay so therefore x is equal to minus eight which is at a there and therefore x is equals to positive two all right and that's how yeah you would deal with this one so they said they want the coordinates of b so therefore at b x is equals to one we choose one we're going to choose one function and substitute it there uh, for me to make life easy for myself i'm going to choose the f of x when f of x is equals to two what is the y value 2 plus 3 plus 1 therefore f of x 2 is equals to uh, if you add this together 5 divided by 5 is going to be 1 1 plus 1 is going to be equals to 2 therefore the coordinates of b is going to be equals to 2 is to 2 there you go great stuff okay all right 
Okay, moving right along, let's move to 6.7. 6.7, 6.7. Last question on this question, guys. Uh, after these ones, we will be dealing with question 7. Okay. All right, so determine the value of x for which when you multiply any value of x that you choose and you multiply by that function, you should get a positive number. Okay. See what I did there, guys. You should be able to read this out in words so that you understand it, guys. So, okay. For which values of x? So if I were to choose any value of x that is on, on the function and multiply it with the f of x, we should get a positive number. So you must go to your function and have a look at these values. Okay. So here we know that you are is negative 8 here. And here also we know that is 2. Okay, a great stuff. So now let's look at this. Mm, when you, you multiply this. Okay, when you multiply this, anything that is here, okay, anything that is here on this function here, okay, anything that is here on this function and you multiply it with x is going to give you a positive number. Remember what I said, if I said negative times negative will give you a positive number, positive times positive will give you a positive number. I think we explained this in uh, 2022, yeah, 2022 past paper. All right. So then you're going to have a negative number and you choose any value of X that is within this region here. You should have a negative number. So therefore, for any values where X, okay, for any values where X is greater or equals to negative one, therefore this should check out. All right. And what else? Have a look at them. But this graph you can't touch the lines of asymptote so therefore we need to say it is also have to be less than negative three okay so anything that is here but less than negative three so in other words you'll never pass this line because we know that is the line of asymptotes okay and then what else okay we have got two here all right remember what i said on the the uh, the, the this the x-axis is like a boundary of positive and negative on a function so this on the top is positive here is negative so anything from here going that side you have got a positive and a positive positive and a positive positive and a positive what did i say about positive and a positive i said positive and a positive when you multiply them together they should give you a positive number okay so therefore and this actually starts here at zero okay so therefore anything that is greater or equal to zero this function would be positive and therefore guys you should be able to get your marks all right if you still don't understand please make sure that you leave a comment on the comment section below i am gustin mapala right here at mazda with gustin if you have not subscribed on this channel you are really really missing out please share this video with your friends with your family members with everybody that needs a uh, to see this content and learn from it. I am Gustin Mapala, working together with you, practicing this mathematics, making sure that we get those distinctions. Please subscribe, share a video with your colleagues, your friends, learners, and everybody else, okay? See you on the next upload, where we'll be doing question sevens.